Councilman Soap, would you mind doing the invitation sure. for us? Please stand. Dear Father, Lord, creator of all things, we come to you this afternoon, Lord, just thank you for the special blessings you've given us this far this day, Lord. Just thank you for all the friends and family that we have, Lord. We just pray that you would be with those, Lord, that are in our nation and uh, need your guidance, Lord, that need your comfort, need your love, Lord. Just be with those that have illness, Lord. I just pray that you will watch over them and uh, bring them comfort. Be with our people, Lord. Be with us as we make decisions that affect our people. Be with our leaders, both national and local. And for all these things, Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 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 Jack Baker? Here. Harley Buzzard? Here. Julia Coates? Here. Bradley Cobb? Bonnie. Joe Fitton? Jody Fishinghawk? Here. Janelle Fulbright? Here. Don Garvin? Bonnie. Chuck Hoskin Jr.? Here. Tyna Glory Jordan? Present. Curtis Snell? Chris Soap? Here. David Thornton? Kara Kevin Watts? Uh -huh, Aha, we have a quorum. Next order of business is approval of the minutes. Uh, being no objection, I'd entertain a motion to Move approve. For approval. Second. Second. Uh, in total, the special session and the regular session. Yes. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, saying fine. Motion carries. Okay, next item of reports. Uh, Ms. Wright, Marshal Service. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You have my report, so I'll entertain any questions to that. And other than that, let me just say we did spectacular at the Polar Plunge, and our explorers participated. We have six students in the Explorer program, and they participated in that. And so I think the Cherokee Nation raised a little over $6,500 for Special Olympics, and the total event was a little over $18,000. And uh, our explorers are also going to be in a competition this weekend with some other explorers in Tulsa. Madam Chair. Sorry, uh, we were rudely interrupted. Ms. Count Watts. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to say thank you and I appreciate the officers that spent their weekend at the Green Country Fishing and Tackle Show. And the response that I received from the public that went and visited the booth and they were it was just outstanding. They all did an excellent job. Well just to say thank you. Yeah, they volunteered uh, their own time to do the booth and, and they enjoyed doing it also, but uh, we were excited about the, being able to talk about what we do. Mr. Hoskin and then Dr. Cobb. Well, Madam Speaker, I would like to move. I don't want to interrupt the report, but I do need to move to amend the agenda. Okay. Uh, Dr. Cobb, did you have anything for... I, I just wanted to... Um, have you gotten any inquiries from the Bartlesville Police Department on cross deputization? No. There, there is some interest there, so just give me a heads up. They okay. may contact you. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Sharon, I know that on the reports... You list out by county. I'm curious to how many calls the marshal service gets in a month of time. Uh, I can do you, get you that keep for track you. of that, don't you? We do. And, and I'd also like to see it broken down by uh, by district or county. I'm just curious as to what kind of calls we're getting, or how many we're getting. No, not the calls itself, but how many. If you can put that on a report, that answer my question. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Any other questions, comments for Ms. Wright? Well, Mr. Hoskins, he has a motion to amend the agenda. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, first off, under reports, add a new item for the uh, youth uh, tribal youth council to give us a report. Uh, it can be at the whatever item, item you uh, like. Um, next, under three items under new business, a new uh, a new uh, new item for resolution establishing the Gammon Trust. New item. Actually, I think uh, it's going to be some discussion of the remand report under redistricting, so I suppose we don't need an additional item for that. And then finally, uh, I guess what would be a new item five, a resolution recognizing former Deputy Chief, uh, Deputy Principal Chief Hastings Shade as National Treasurer of the Cherokee Nation. Okay. Uh, 
second. I'll second. Any discussion? Amending agenda to include these items. <coughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Hoskins. Next report is, uh, the next two reports are Ms. Hammonds. You have our reports. The only thing, um, <coughs> items of interest that I would like to add, I guess, uh, we had closing arg argument in the Northern District of Oklahoma last Thursday in the poultry litigation. Um, both the state and the uh, defendants were allowed to file supplemental uh, proposed findings of fact and conclusions of law. Those filings are still coming in after all that's submitted. Then it will be in front of Judge Frizzell for his decision. You know, I have no idea when that will be. Um, and the uh, on the report, you'll see that um, our final brief in the Tenth Circuit was also filed. There's a companion, or not a companion appeal, but a, another appeal pending on this same case in the Tenth Circuit. So I don't know if they will consolidate those, if they'll wait till all <coughs> the appeals on that matter are up there, or if they'll decide them separately. We haven't seen anything indicating that they are contemplating doing that, but I wouldn't be particularly surprised. Any questions or comments for Mr. Hoskin? Um, Madam Treasurer, it's my understanding that the Republican-controlled state legislature is contemplating a commission of some sort to evaluate gaming compacts. I don't know that it's passed, but it's something I've read about, and that idea is a bit disturbing to me. But I just want to know if that's on your office's radar screen, or is that something you would anticipate being invited to participate in, or mainly just wanting to bring it to your attention if it wasn't already on your radar? Thank you. Um, you know, I think I have heard something about that, and I need to inquire further. Okay, I need, I'll you. find out the status. Thank you. Thank you, Any other questions? Comments? Mm -hmm. It's not planned. Thank you. I don't have anything new on the GEG matter. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Johnson, or, or someone from the Election Commission? <coughs> Anyone here from the Election Commission? I think you stepped out to talk to the Chief. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll move on down to uh, Tax Commission. Oh, Sharon Swepston is out of town, so she has provided a written report. She said if there are any questions that she'd be glad to uh, provide an email response or next meeting. Are you going to go back if he comes to the Election Commission? If he comes again. Thank you. Um, next report is self-governance. Ms. Handy. Good afternoon. I don't have anything uh, major to report other than uh, we received uh, an additional uh, money for roads. Uh, we're in the process of receiving that payment for a little over $3 million, which is just an additional payment of our 2010 budget. Uh, one other thing I'd like to be sure and remind you uh, and invite you to uh, Don Barnes' retirement reception tomorrow, if you can come. Uh, he's worked with the nation for 30 years and uh, is retiring, so we'd like to wish him well uh, in his gardening and fishing and other endeavors. So, Great. Unless any you have questions? any questions. What, what time is it and where? Um, it's from 2 to 4 and it's in the OCO room, the ballroom. Most people refer to it as the ballroom. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Ms. Handy. Uh, Mr. Hummingbird. Thank you, Ms. Handy. Nice for you to be here today. I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. <laughs> I apologize, I did not submit my report in time, I don't believe, but I do have it here today. I might just... You uh, gotta get a new one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get my one demerit for today. <laughs> um, as far as developments on the gaming side, uh, just a few quick updates for you that's not in the report. Uh, we are... Um, monitoring uh, the latest appointment or proposed appointment to the NIGC which came out today uh, received notice uh, actually last week that Dan Little who is uh, 
representative of the Pequots with uh, Mashantucket Pequots out of Connecticut is going to be put forward and his nomination actually was put forward today and announced in the Federal Register. Uh, Dan is uh, a good selection for that uh, associate uh, uh, membership for NIGC. Uh, I've worked with Dan in the years past and I think if he uh, goes through the appointment uh, process, which he should make it unscathed, I think he would be a good commissioner for us to have and a good uh, friend in Washington for us to call upon if we need to. So uh, I'm, I'm pleased with their announcement on that. Um, we also just recently we went through a, uh, uh, a quarterly inspection with the uh, State Compliance Agency of all of our uh, gaming facilities. Uh, received a report back from them on that yesterday. They uh, uh, appreciated all of the information that we were able to provide them. All of our information is current and up to date and accurate. Machines accounted for, employees are licensed, and the facilities are operating in a safe and healthy manner. Uh, so that's uh, good news for us to report. And um, we are uh, currently working with CNE to get all of the preparations necessary for the Ramona project to uh, proceed un unhindered. Uh, we got information back from the NIGC that we have submitted to them. Excuse me, we got a response back from the NIGC on the information that we submitted to them uh, in advance of the facility opening. By their requirements, we have to notify them a minimum of 120 days before we open up a new facility. We have done that, provided them all the information that was available to us at the time. Uh, and all that is needed now is for a final inspection of the facility to be done before we are fully satisfying the NIGC requirements, but they see no reason for us to uh, uh, be hindered by anything from them. We have, we've met every obligation that we needed to for NIGC reporting purposes. So uh, with that, I'll entertain any questions you might have. Yes, Mr. Hoffman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Republicans in the United States Senate have ground to a halt just a wide range of nominees to various commissions, including Senator Coburn, including Senator McCain. Do you have any reason to think that they would put up a roadblock to the NIGC nominee? Probably not for the associate uh, appointment, but the uh, chair appointment is still hanging out there. Uh, in fact, I talked with a colleague of mine back in D.C. just a couple of hours ago and the, uh, the person that has been identified tentatively for the chairmanship is in the final stages of the vetting process. Uh, and at this point, there doesn't seem to be any roadblocks in, in her path um, as far as her background goes. Now, as far as making it through the, uh, the appointment process, that one I can see being uh, of more interest, whereas the associate commissioner does not necessarily have to be approved by Senate. It's only a secretarial appointment that can be done without very much uh, fanfare. Uh, but since the chairman is a presidential appointment, it has to be confirmed by Senate, they have that, that particular appointment is going to be a little bit more interesting to watch. Thank you. Yes, Laura Jordan. Jamie, uh, can you enlighten us as to what the issue is with the Horse Racing Association and uh, Fair Meadows? I read a little bit about it in the newspaper, and mm -hmm. that was the first time it kind of threw up a red flag. Could you tell us a little bit about what's going on there? Be glad to. In fact, we're working on a um, report for our commission that should be done no later than tomorrow. Uh, once I found out about the uh, story that broke uh, regarding the horseman's dissatisfaction or interest in the uh, payments that they have received, particularly in the Tulsa market, um, identifying us, Osages and Creeks, as being contributors to the Fair Meadows payments, uh, I made, went back and made sure that we were doing everything that we were required to do under the compact because we, my, uh, my audit staff, reviews all the uh, state compact fee payments, whether it's to the state, Horse Racing Commission, or to Fair Meadows. All three of them get reviewed. What came out in the article last week was the fact that horsemen are taking issue with the Creek Nation, not the Cherokee Nation or the Osages, but the Creeks for removing certain expenses or identifying certain costs as being uh, expenses that can be removed from the fee calculation. Those expenses are more in the area of marketing and um, promotional type uh, operations. About three or four years ago, the NIGC issued a bulletin that we have uh, taken to use as a part of our review on our fee calculations that says promotional items such as free play, or uh, any, any type of incentive to gain are not eligible to remove from 
what is called GGR, the gross gaming revenue of the operation. Once we have that uh, particular bulletin in our hands, we ceased uh, allowing C&E to remove those expenses from the uh, calculation of the fee payments. Since that time, we have abided by all of those uh, regulations and the calculation requirements. Uh, however, I think what has been done recently with the Creek Nation is that they have identified those particular items as business expenses that are eligible to be removed from that calculation. Osages and us, as far as I know, the Osages do the same thing that we do, and they add those back in before the calculations are done. So we are on solid footing. I'm, I'm very comfortable with where we are in our position. Uh, but we, like I mentioned earlier, we are uh, preparing a report for our commission. I'd be glad to share it, uh, just to give everybody a, uh, uh, a better feeling about what we do and, and, and what we are actually doing under our requirements. If you would share that with us at, um, in the next, you know, week or two, we'd sure appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Dr. Cobb? Um, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm exact, I'm accurate when I make mm -hmm. this statement. This. Uh, is this the total compact fee across the board that we paid since 2005? Correct. Since the day we first started operating the games covered by the compact, whether they were table games or electronic games, that's the total amount from life to date of the compact. Well, I, um, I, I know um, before I got on the council I was not really aware. And I'm aware now what a, what a good job y'all actually do on this because this is actually a pretty complicated, pretty complicated thing. And, and as you're well aware, I know that you get this all the time that um, people will make comments about the casinos and all the money they make. Mm -hmm. And I have actually heard the same rumblings that Councilor Hoskin had. And I I think it's I wanted to go on record. I know there's people that watch these broadcasts, and I want to go on record. I think it's um, I think it's definitely within the purview of. Uh, of not only Cherokee citizens, but citizens of the state of Oklahoma, that we have paid just shy of $71 million in compact fees in five years. And I think it's definitely within the right of citizens of the state of Oklahoma, if they're going to start talking about these compact fees, I think it's definitely in their right to ask, what did you do with the $71 million? Mm -hmm. So we always get the question of, you know, we're doing our job. Right. And we, I would put that back on the state. I think it's a legitimate question for a citizen of the state of Oklahoma to ask what they did with it. And uh, two points on that fact. Uh, it, originally when the compacts were uh, being discussed, uh, I think the magic number that was thrown out there was around 70 or 72 million that the compacts were expected to generate in revenue to the state. Uh, tribes, um, it took a while for tribes to implement not only the table games piece, piece, but to get the electronic games piece up to uh, uh, a point to where the games were viable. That took about a year and a half. But after that, tribes started to increase their um, revenue payments under the compact to the state. And for the past two years, have exceeded that, two, or excuse me, that $72 million mark. So as far as tribes making their contributions to the state, I think tribes have demonstrated by this, and there's another report that you can get from the state finance office that shows the same type of information by tribe. We've met our obligations, um, but also with um, with the uh, the funds that we have here, um, we also personally, as you well know, describe to our tribal citizens where the money goes mm -hmm. through the various pu uh, reports and publications. So. I, I don't think it's unreasonable for anybody to ask for the same thing from the state myself. Now, that's just my personal opinion. But uh, you know, I, we're very comfortable. We keep a very close watch on these particular numbers here to make sure that we're meeting our obligations no more, no less. So we're, we're living up to our end of the bargain. It's up to everybody else to live up to theirs. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Austin and then Mr. Baker. Yeah, and are you, are you saying that? We're actually on target in terms of the money paid to the state, what they anticipated. That's the last numbers I saw, is that uh, the numbers that the, all the revenues that the tribes have provided to the state under the terms of the compact have met that requirement. And the state can't say the same about the lottery, which makes me wonder maybe they should turn that over to the tribes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking for more work. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
and this 70 million is just jerking off. That's purely us. That's just us. Mm -hmm. And the creeks and the Osage and all the others get turned on those things. Correct. And, and like I said, uh, I, I can probably get you a copy of the latest report on that, but they, there is a report that is maintained that shows the breakdown of compact fee payments made by the tribe, by tribe. Uh, I think Chickasaws are first. Uh, of course, they have probably the most and in, in the largest number of uh, gaming facilities in the state. Then there's us and then the Choctaws and then it goes on down from there. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the amount of money that tribes contribute to the state under the terms of the compact, I think, meets the expectations, if not exceeds the expectations. Thank you. Mr. Bezzard? <coughs> and you answered part of my question, Jamie. And I'd like to see that, if you could show us where to go to to see what the tribes pay for the compact fees. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, you may or may not know this, but do you have a, maybe a ballpark figure of what Cherokees, Creeks, and Osages are paid to the Paramedals? Uh, racetrack over there. Do you have any idea what that might be? Uh, we have it actually broken out in that report. Okay. Um, yeah, it's uh, broken out by the state, what we pay the state directly. Does that include Osages and uh, uh, It does not include Osages and such. I was such. wondering what, what the total takes off the three tribes. Uh, yes, I, in fact, uh, uh, we could probably get that fairly easily because the amount of uh, money that we uh, pay to Fair Meadows is a pro rate share based on the number of machines that we operate in that market. So at this point, the Creeks have, I think, um, about another 150 more games than we do. I think they have right around 1,850, 1,860 number of games that they're operating. We have right around 1,700. Um, so their amount should be probably close to right, that. Right. In fact, this last time, I believe their share of the Fair Meadows payment was around 43%. Uh, we made up 34%, and then the Osages made up the remainder. Well, I'm just curious how much money uh, Fair Meadows is collecting from the three tribes uh, since they don't have gaming machines in there. So I don't know what kind of market they would have if they had the machines in there. So. I can definitely find that out. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Mm -hmm. Uh Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I know this isn't necessarily part of your job, but if you happen, when you're looking those numbers up, I'd be interested in what percentage of the Fair Meadows budget is supported by the tribes. We need to put that together if you happen to come across those numbers. Okay. I'll see if I can get that. Thank you. Thank you. Under questions? Comments? Mr. Hummingbird, were you finished? I'm spent. <laughs> you did good. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Next report, Mr. Hembree, convocation. Madam Chairman, there's uh, no new news to report from the last report. Uh, we are still waiting uh, 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 final pieces of uh, uh, some major acts. Uh, the election commission is, is complete. Uh, I believe that uh, we are going to go with the tarot act that we have. Um, and uh, there is the gaming act still uh, it, uh, to be finished. Uh, when we get those three uh, uh, that complete, we're ready to burn off uh, uh, CDs to the west and uh, get our our, our quote. You're working with Kelly, I understand, uh, with Legistar. Legistar is uh, looking very good. I, I mean, I, uh, she has sent me the link, uh, the, the link, excuse me, and uh, uh, am able to do a great amount of research on it. And I think it's going to be extremely beneficial. And it's, I think it's right there, ready to go. I, I would, would recommend as many uh, people playing with it as possible at this point. I think uh, we have a test phase coming up. Isn't that right, Shelley? Mm -hmm. Okay, if, any questions for Todd? Comments? Thank you, Todd. Um, number nine was Youth Tribal Council. Is there one, anyone here from the Youth Tribal Council? Mr. Enloe. Oh, yeah, there you are. Come forward, please. The new tribal council asked if they could report quarterly, uh, not only for the exposure, for the experience of how our government works, and they've gone about restructuring their organization. And tell us your name and uh, what is your position on the new tribal council? Well, my name is Garrett Reed. Uh, I'm the newest member. I've only been on it for about a month. Um, I was only supposed to be here to introduce myself to you guys. Um, as for this 
presentation or something they were supposed to show y'all. I have no idea about that. I was <laughs> supposed to come here and look pretty, I guess. So it looks like I'm the only one here. So. Uh, well, we're glad you're here. Well, I understand you, you or someone will be reporting to us quarterly. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody have any questions or comments? Yes. What district is he? Are you from? That's a good question. Uh, Where do you live? Locust Grove. I'm, I'm okay. not too far from. Okay. The boy is good. <laughs> yes, Mr. Hobbs. Do we need to take any action to ensure that they're going to report on a quarterly basis? If you don't mind making a motion. I'd make the motion that Youth Council report on a quarterly basis. Second. Booth and second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say the sign. Thank you. You did very well. Thank you. <laughs> You're locked in now, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> <Very Man. well. laughs> I'm going to move back up to the Election Commission. Mr. Johnson. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I think you all received our monthly report. I don't have anything additionally to report other than I, I noticed that we're on the agenda uh, for later on and we'll be here for that. But I will answer any questions. Ms. Camelot. Thank you, Madam mm -hmm. Speaker. Um, I would just like to take the moment to document in Cherokee history because I would hate for a Choctaw to define our history. And right now the only thing that's been said about this is in the newspapers. So logistically, Councilman Garvin and I filed lawsuit because the Election Commission is the proper place that we have to file the lawsuit, not because we disrespect any of you or for any other reason, but because politically we haven't been able to address the redistricting issue here at this body, we then therefore, so I just want you to know, we have that most respect for each of you that sit on the election commission. I'm not for sure about your representative in the newspaper article, uh, but I would hate for that to be the only thing on our Cherokee record as a Choctaw speaking for them. So we just appreciate you and there is nothing personal about our lawsuit. We, so. we didn't take the lawsuit as anything personal. Okay, We perfect. understand. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Johnson. The next item on the agenda is old business, and that is redistricting for discussion and possible action. That's under your old business panel there. Uh, Mr. Henry. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, the Election Commission uh, has submitted an amended remand report uh, in accordance with uh, uh, the uh, directive of the court and under their statutory duties. Uh, the, uh, the amended remand report uh, sets the total number of citizens within the 14 county jurisdictional area at 102,836. Uh, the remand report then uh, 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 described how they did it. They, they uh, apportioned the uh, uh, citizens residing within the jurisdictional boundaries into the uh, 15 district uh, uh, lines that were drawn or districts that were created by the council and at the end of that you see the, uh, the, the deviation uh, that, that exists. At this point, uh, as the, court, uh, as the uh, uh, council knows, uh, the, uh, uh, the provisions of 1408 that created 15 districts is not fully implemented by order of the court so therefore, the default is the uh, uh, original language of the nine districts. Uh, the council at this point has a few options. Number one, they can adopt the remand report, the amended remand report, and then there would be an evidentiary hearing on whether that was uh, constitutional as to one man, one vote, uh, uh, and if the deviations were, were too great. Another option of the council is to reject the amended remand report and say we are going to go by the figures that we created in uh, uh, when determining uh, Legislative Act 1408. Another option for the council is to um, uh, ask the uh, election commission to apportion the 102,000 some odd citizens vis-a-vis -vis nine districts. That is a letter that, uh, that, that would be um, uh, I believe Chief Smith sent uh, Mr. Cole and myself a letter uh, to that effect that that's what uh, the chief would, would like to see happen. Also, the uh, uh, or the uh, uh, 
there's also the option of doing nothing uh, and letting the uh, uh, original nine district uh, uh, statutes stand or the original nine district apportionment stand. Um, so therefore, th those are the options as I see them. Um, and uh, Mr. Cole or Mr. Smith are, are not here, but uh, um, Ms. Uh, Secretary Knight is. And, and uh, as I see it, those are the options, and we will take any questions that could you, with respect to those last two options, could you distinguish between those two so they get for me? The, the ask the um, election commission to apportion as to the as to the, the nine using yeah. 102,000. Mm -hmm. Well, that that is under, under the original act. It says that apportionment will take place every 12 years, beginning in 1990. Uh, which would make the next apportionment under that uh, legislative act in two, uh, 2014. Okay. Um, uh, or, it says, or at any other time that the council deems necessary. Um, this would be one of those times that you would say, we deem it necessary that you apportion the, uh, the figures uh, using the latest information that, that, you, that you have, which they have determined to be 102,000 and apportion those citizens uh, within the district or within the jurisdiction within the nine districts. Uh, the, the do nothing would, in my opinion, would say, look, we're just going to go with what, uh, with, with what we had last, last election cycle. Okay. Now, mindful that there is uh, still uh, you know, out there is a, is a lawsuit that, uh, by uh, uh, Ms. Callan Watts and Mr. Garvin uh, that will run its course. Uh, and, and whatever happens there, you know, I'm not clairvoyant, so I can't tell you. Sure. If we ask the commission to apportion using the latest numbers, which sometimes escape me because I've seen so many different numbers, but 102 is the latest. The according to the uh, the Reman report. Uh, 102,836 is the figure that the Election Commission has determined to be within the 14 county jurisdictional boundaries. That wouldn't have any impact. That action wouldn't have any impact on the pending lawsuit. Oh, no. no. The lawsuit goes as, as, as it is. And refresh my memory, the lawsuit is asking for a reapportionment? Yes. Based on just there's a factual dispute about the numbers. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Ms. Fishing Hawk. <clears throat> yes. Um, listening to what Todd said, and Melanie, just a real quick answer. I was out in the hallway talking to Chad before I come in here. It was my understanding the 102, basically, him and I is asking and wanting the same thing. He wants to take the latest numbers and put them on a nine district map to see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I want to make a motion to adopt the remand report, the 102 836. I'd like that for my motion. Okay. Uh, that was the third out uh, the first option that he recommended. Do you have a second? I'll second. Moved and second. Now discussion. And this is to adopt the remand report. Yes. Just the remand report has a 15 district map attached to it. Is that true? Yes. So is that the councilor's request that it be apportioned according to 15 districts? Well, that was that was the rest of it. But when we talked out in the hallway, and I think Melanie just agreed that we was going to ask for the remand report with a fifth with the nine district. If she Mr. Hoskins, well, go ahead. I, I would suggest that it that it's that it's a two motion matter. First motion to adopt a remand report, and then the second motion, second motion to uh, uh, use the figures of the remand report to divide among uh, the uh, existing nine districts. Okay. Okay. okay then I'm just going to make the motion right now to adopt the remand report. All right. And we have a second. Now discussion. Ms. Callahan. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to clarify because if. The remand is the remand report based on the current actual data. What data are we basing this on? Yeah, it's my understanding it's the map that was, that was presented by Mr. Justice. The current mm -hmm. with all of the data available. Well, 
Yes, in the, the February 5, 2010 uh, uh, letter of, uh, by Mr. Justice, and he is present, uh, stated that uh, the correct count is 102,836 citizens within the 14 county jurisdictional area. That was Mr. Justice's uh, calculations in the, uh, the remand report adopted, adopted that figure. Mr. Hoskin, if you have a question. Mr. Speaker, just to add to uh, what your counsel has said, uh, in that same memo, Mr. Justice attached four maps, um, two based on the 102,000 number, uh, which um, I just want to clarify excludes what we've been calling bad addresses. Um, those bad addresses resulted from our mass mailings and most of those mass mailings, you'll notice, uh, only affected, primarily affected two counties uh, within the jurisdiction because of the, the nature of the mailings. Uh, we didn't do mass mailings generally across the nation. And so the difference in the two numbers, uh, the 107,000 number and the 102,000 number, are the uh, exclusion of those returned mail at addresses. And so I just wanted to make that clarification. If there are any further questions about that, Mr. Justice is here. So the 102 does not include the bad address? Yes, and it primarily affects two counties because of we didn't make proportionate mailings. Okay, thank you. Ms. Tom Watts? So the correct numbers are the February 2nd, 2010 map for nine districts. I just, I mean, I can't vote on this until I know exactly because we have so many maps in front of us. So I just want to make sure that it would be the February 2nd, 2010 map. No, that's, no, that's that, that, that wouldn't be the remand report. Yeah. The 102 is the, is the number now. On information, Madam Speaker. Yes. Mr. Tom Watkins, I think he has some information here. No, I, I'm looking for some information. It's a very basic question, which is, is the document that's been identified as the amended remand report, the one we have in front of us with a single map attached? That is correct. And it reflects 102,836. Correct. We have a copy of that. Yeah. Yes, and that's my concern. According to what the court's already ruled, we would have to go with the 110,000 something number because that is the correct, that's what's in the database showing people living there, whether we have verifiable current addresses or not. They are registered as citizens in that district, and that's the last known information. The, the court hasn't ruled that. They ruled on that document for what the, registration. What, what, what the court ruled is for this process to, to, to go over again, okay? It said to have the election commission do the apportionment. There was a okay. data ruling, maybe not in the last case, but the one before, on data with the sheet, the one-page sheet we fill out as tribal citizens that right. says what district we live in, which should include all of the data, okay. which is the 110,000. Right. I'm not aware of that. Okay, but what I'm saying is that the court ruled for the election commission to do the apportionment in accordance with Legislative Act, I think, 3509, uh, yeah, or, or 3506, okay. And that, thank you very much. According to the election, and I will read from the order, thank you, Mr. Baker. According to the election commission, obtains certified information from the Cherokee National Restoration dated May 22, 2009, which establishes of that date 109 citizens were registered to vote within the jurisdictional boundaries of the Cherokee Nation, relying upon this information, the optimum population to achieve equal representation, one Cherokee, one vote, is $7,272 uh, $7, <laughs> registered voters per district. Okay. That, that, is, that is from the original remand report, okay? That is not from the court report. That's from the original remand report. Based on uh, the February 5th letter of David Justice, the Election Commission went back and amended the remand report based on the figures of 102,000. That is what's before you is, is, the, is the amended remand report. 
February 19th. Is that what we're talking about? No. What date do you have it, Jeff? Filed the 10th. Yeah, it's fifth amendment of February 10th. February 10th. Watch, did you have one more question? It, so I did have one more question. With all of the addresses and all of the people in the Cherokee Nation, it's 110,000 now, right? The new with all the data where you kicked out all my voters because somebody returned an envelope, it is 110,000. It's not 102 or whatever. That's not what the remand report states. The wrong maps attached is what I can tell. That's why I'm trying to make sure and clarify. But I'd like uh, to hear from and Mr. Data, data Services, on. Geodata Services. Gosh, I've done so many maps for y'all. I've been having to look at myself. Is this all of them? This, this oh. is your, your letter. Okay. And that's the name report. That's incorrect data. No. Okay, the hundred and the hundred and ten thousand includes the unverifiable bad addresses that we had listed in the tribal registration database as a tribal citizen living there, but when a mass when a piece of mail went to that address it was returned saying that that person does not live there anymore. So a nine one one address could have changed the everything or uh, yeah. I mean, we could be not counting Cherokees just because we don't have a 911 address. And this right, impacts Delaware County a, and Rogers County at minimum. Right. And the 102,000 number reflects that. We re removed those bad addresses, and that's where we got the 102. So it's not equally removing all bad addresses for all districts. It's only removing bad addresses because we bothered to mail our constituents in those two districts. Right. So if we adopt this, we would be adopting poor, we would not be adopting appropriate and equal representation for all charities, just because not everybody's done mailings. Thank you, Madam mm -hmm. Speaker. Mr. Hoskin? Well, I don't think we're going to be goaded into admitting anything in a pending lawsuit, but isn't it true there's not been a single finding of fact by any court with respect to the numbers? That you know. That is my understanding. We, and, we, we have not got to that point. And by statute, the process is we take a remand report from the Election Commission and we take some action on it. Yes. That's my Accept it, reject it, do nothing. Right. Thank you, Ben Speaker. Yes. Um, Dr. Cobb. Um, I've got a question. I've got two things, if I may. Um, number one, I'm assuming that if you're going to, if, if what's on the table, I know there's a second part of this motion that we're not to, but this goes to the heart of both questions. If you're going to take the 102,836 and divide it among nine, I'm assuming the optimal numbers is 11,426, because that's what that is divided by nine districts. And if I guess my first question is, I'm looking at the population in District 13 and District 14 as it is on the 15 district map. That would put us close to 15,000, so we're already over 4,000. Not being an attorney, I, I'm, I guess I'm asking, does that open us up to some kind of a, because we're way off the apportionment of that. I'm, you're almost 5,000 off the apportionment. So that, that, that's my question. And I think what, that's, what does that open us up? And that's, I think that's one of the things that the, the council needs to see is a nine district based, uh, a nine district division. You know, uh, the election commission has placed a figure at 102,000. So uh, it, it, in order to make it, you know, a completely informed choice, you would want to know how that is vis -vis the nine districts. And ultimately my concern is, and that's fine, but then somebody comes back and says, well, you're, you're, you're almost 5,000 above your apportionment in, in these two districts. I don't want to, but that's my concern. And my second thing actually goes to Councilor Callum Watts, and I'm not putting you on the spot, but I, I, I want to kind of be clear here. I understand you're not in favor of this. What is your suggestion as far as, because I don't know the timeline on a lawsuit. Are you, is your, is your uh, 
Are you maintaining we need to wait for a lawsuit to go through? I mean, what, I'm not sure, what, and I'll yield time. That's, I'm trying to figure out what you're, what you're saying we, what you're in favor of doing. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I would rather have not file this suit. I'm okay with keeping the nine districts. We need to do with the accurate data, and the accurate data is not the 102,000. It's the 109, 110,000 that was provided with the February 2nd, 2010 dates by GeoData. And that reflects all the Rogers County Cherokees and all the Delaware County Cherokees because we had both done mail outs. That is the wrong data. The data being proposed under this motion is the incorrect data. Otherwise, I have no problem with the motion. We should go ahead and apportion, but based on real data and all of our Cherokees in the 14 counties, not portions of them because it's convenient politically for some folks. Is the, if, if, that's off. I'm sorry. Um, I, I want to hear some more discussion on this, especially maybe from those in Delaware County, but I would like to see some thought given to, it seems like we are close to getting something done so the election commission can actually do their job here. Um, I'd like for everybody to maybe consider, and I'm not making this motion yet because I know there's some other comments, but uh, to possibly think about getting us to the nine districts uh, with the assumption that we're going to eventually get the correct numbers. If it's 110, fine. If it's not, then that's fine too. But I would like to see something solved today as far as putting numbers into nine districts. That, that would be my... So I'm just going to throw that out. I'll, I know there's some other I people... I think that's an option that you propose. I'm sorry? That's an option that he proposed. Yes. Ms. Corey Jordan? Um, what happens if you don't adopt their number today? Oh, it's... Again, it would be uh, probably more of uh, potential litigation uh, saying that uh, you know that one party or the other is not doing their job. I would recommend that we take that we pick a ticket, uh, or you know, and and that we either accept or reject. I mean, the way the statute reads, we need to either accept or reject the election commission's report. They have placed a a, a figure of 102,000 some odd figures. Now, Ms. Callan Watson, and Ms. Garvin, Mr. Garvin have a lawsuit. Now, they part of vis-a-vis -vis that lawsuit is they're going to be challenging the the uh, uh, the calculation, and they may or may not be right. That's going to be up for for judges to to determine. But right now, before the council, there is a remand report in accordance with the statute. They've done their job, and we need to either accept that report or reject that report. And is the motion that's on the floor is that consistent, Melanie, with what the chief is asking in his letter to uh, the election commission? I know the nine district, sticking with the nine district is, yeah. is consistent with that. And in the, in the letter is a February 19, 2010 letter which says, uh, and I will uh, quote it, and this is a letter from uh, Chief Smith to Lloyd Cole and, and, and Fax to me. Um, as stated in the court order, since the tribal court has not acted after we received the June 1, 2009 court order apportionment data from the election commission, um, in effect, the number of the districts from, from 9 to 15 as provided is not effective, and therefore we're at the 9. Uh, uh, Chief Smith, and I will just paraphrase it, well, we respectfully request the Election Commission pursuant to the court's order submit an amended report that includes apportionment of 15 council seats and affords a reasonable equal division of citizens among the 9 districts, according to the most recent population data submitted to the Election Commission. So, and, so the motion that's on the floor appears to be consistent with his request. Right. Well, and my understanding is if we don't do this, we could very well be looking at having to use numbers from as far back as 1990. Is that correct? Is that correct? If we don't establish a number pursuant to their remand report, their amended remand report, we could be looking after March 1st of having to use numbers that go all the way back to 1990. Sure, sure. Uh, but but all, and, and let's, let's remember the, the spirit of the election law itself, is that 
the, you know, the reason we have the election commission and, and we, you know, set out there is that it's to be an independent body, you know, without influence from the principal chief uh, or the legis or the or the, or the tribal council. Uh, Judge Fight wanted. Uh, we we came up with legislative act 1408. Judge Fight, according to the act and in, in, in the way in, in chief's argument is that we let the election commission out of that process. They wanted the election commission in the process. The election commission now has completed its process and has submitted a report. And we and that report is the amended remand report that's, that that is before you. And we in order to you know to to carry out the act, uh, we need to either accept it or reject it. Melanie, did you have a response to Ms. Flores' order? No, I just had a, a matter of information. Okay, please. Uh, if it would assist the committee in reaching a decision, the maps for nine districts using the 102 number and using the, the other number, 107, have both been generated. And so they're available if that assists people in coming to, to a conclusion. Thank you. Mr. Yes, uh, we could have Mr. Hammer, I had a question on the. 110,000 population count. Yes. Did that include bad addresses and everybody? Correct. Okay. Then we go back to the 102 count. That took the bad addresses out. Is that what we're saying? Yes. Well, I I really think the 110 count is where your people are because those people didn't get up and leave the county. They just because you sent them that out. They're still there someplace. <clears throat> and one thing that it would probably be good for the council's edification is that if you look at the uh, uh, Mr. Justice's February 5th letter, his second, or excuse me, third map, which says 110,892,000 uh, people, and then you look at his fourth map, which is the nine districts, uh, both have the... Uh, Cherokee Nation, Nation, Nation registration data of 522.09. Uh, however, we need to understand that there's a discrepancy in, 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 in these two maps. The, the first map has 110,892, uh, but if you add a, a, the, the, the last map, the fourth map with the nine districts, if you add all those districts numbers together, you come up with 122,004. 27, which is obviously a, a big discrepancy, and that needs to be rectified if, if, if you were to go to that route. Yes, uh -huh. that's that clarified for me because it just didn't feel like the uh, with the 110,000, those people didn't get up and leave those districts. It didn't make sense, you know, just because they got bad addresses for, the, for that district that the whole thousand or so that may in a, be in a particular district got to move. They may have moved to another house, but, they had, but they're still in that district. So I didn't lose them from the district, they didn't move from that address. So the 110 uh, looked to me like it would be where we'd want to go from. Who asked it? Jack Baker. I was just going to make a comment that the maps Ms. Henry was referring to her on page 20 and 22 in our old business. So we have the one that has 102,000 and the one that has 122,000. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I, I like the nine districts, and because of a couple of comments that was made last time we met on this, Two of the election commission folks made comments about the lateness of time and and all of that. I think everybody's coming to the same consensus on that. Uh, the other thing is the addresses, the bad addresses, good addresses, based on some particular mail app somewhere. I spent a lot of time at the post office, and uh, if you have a route extension or a route bust, and you make another route, or there's a lot of things that can happen, and if the Election Commission or whoever's got addresses from years back, let's say, it's supposed to be, as far as they know, current. A lot of times, if, if you may live in the same house 
in the same district, on the same road and all of that. But you may go from Route 1 to Route 2. And if they mail out based on that address that's you know, a few years old, or maybe in some cases a few months old, it may come back to you as a bad address. And the people still live in the same house sometimes. So, I mean, hanging our hat on what's absolute as far as the number count is a hard thing to do, I think. That's just a comment. Something to think about. Thank you. Ms. Callum Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, the earlier ruling from the court that I was referring to is that when you go to because this population data is based on registration data, not voter data. So it is that one single form that you fill out that you would say that you live in Rogers County, even if the address may reflect, you know, we share kind of some of those fuzzy areas up in that northeast corner of Rogers County. Um, so I'm curious, and this is a question for Mr. Justice, how many was the difference? How many did uh, Rogers County and Delaware County lose in that? Approximately. Uh, I don't remember the totals off the top of my head, but it was anywhere from four to six thousand. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Miss Fishing Hawk. No, I got one. I want to clear something up. I didn't make a motion to accept any map. What I made a motion for was to accept some numbers. The judge told us we had to get the numbers from the election office, right? I mean, that's what they ruled. That's why it wasn't accepted. We have to get the numbers. The election brings us the 102 numbers that come from the election office. That's what they accepted, right? That's their report, yes, 102,000. Okay. The chief and Melanie just now said they're, they accept that number too. But we're not dividing that match yet, right? We're just accepting a number. Because, you know, I'm looking at Delaware, I'm looking at registration numbers. And, you know, the numbers I'm looking at is way off from what they're trying to say Delaware has, because Leela has a lot more than that down. So I'm not wanting to do a map yet, I'm just saying the numbers. The, re the re remand report has a map attached to it, okay? If you accept the remand report, then you follow up with a, 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 a second motion to take those same figures and divide it by nine districts. But not we don't have to accept the map, we can just accept the numbers and then ask that a map be drawn up from the from the, the hard number. No, no, no. There, no maps will be drawn up, okay? If you're, uh, because the, the only people who have the power to draw maps or <coughs> lines is the council, okay? Mm -hmm. You would ask the election commission to use its figures that it, it came up with to divide that among the, the existing nine districts as it is right now, okay? Okay, and they can actually go to registration and get some data. Well, actually, without going through GEO. Well, well, they have they have submitted their report with their figures. Okay. Uh, now, you wouldn't, uh, you know, and, and obviously they're an independent commission. They would do it, but they they have they they have independently brought forward to your numbers. What I'm asking, and I think in in it's in spirit with with Judge Fight's decision is you need to either accept or reject the, 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 the election commission's report. They, have, they were under statutory duty to give you a report. They have given you that report. Now we need to either accept it or reject it. And then if you want them to do anything additional to that, then you would make a motion to do that. May I clarify a statement about what the chief would support? In his letter, he does say he, the nine districts are the status quo and he's requesting that it be redrawn at nine um, I don't think that there was a specificity as to which data set in his letter and I haven't talked to him about which data set he supports and I don't know if you all talked about it uh, counselor in the hallway but I just wanted to clarify that I personally don't know about the data set issue thank you Melanie fishing hawk are you finished Okay, so Tom, they don't have the power to redraw that, and I realize that. We have that power. Yes. The, the council itself has the power to draw the portion up. Correct. Okay. So we can accept the 102 and then ask some maps to be drawn from it to start supplying us with some maps for the nine districts to look at. 
you can, but be mindful also that a part of this, the, the law that is standing is that this process needs to be complete by March 1st of, of the election year preceding, of, of the year preceding a regular election year. March 1st is Monday. Uh, okay. The, uh, uh, so what I would, you know, like I said, we need to either accept or reject the elect, uh, the, the, uh, which is the motion on the floor actually is to, is to accept. And then if there is to take, and then uh, I, uh, I would, would expect that after that vote is taken, if we accept that report, that there will be a further motion to say, take those figures and divide it by the nine existing districts. Otherwise, we go, if we don't by March the 1st, then we use 1990 numbers? Uh, yes, uh, a, a very good argument would be made that if you don't do it by March 1st, you go, you relate back to what you got. Yeah. Figures that you have, which is 99. Okay. Point of clarification, what is that total number? Just got a curiosity. That's when we even all, didn't we still run all together then? At large? 15? Are you finished? Are you finished? I'd like to know what the number is. Pardon? I'd kind of like to know the number that we're going to have to go back to if we don't have to pay the 1990 We don't have that available right now, correct? It would be significantly less than the numbers that we have today. Ms. Cal Watts? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I'm all for, I think the Chief alluded to and was specific in his letter that was current, which would be the corrected numbers after they figured out that there were citizens left out of that initial 102 count, it would be the February 2nd, 2010 maps and numbers with the 100, approximately 110,000 tribal citizens. And I, I would I would think it would be great and I'll offer a friendly amendment that would be based, we do the nine districts and they apportion based on accurate data, which would be the current numbers the chief alludes to. And i offer that as a friendly amendment. Clark, okay, so I was about to say, so make it, to make it understood, we're, you're wanting to go with the 110? Yes, ma'am. The one that's entitled, it includes bad and unverifiable addresses? Yes. No, because I'm not going to send something to the court that's not fact and proof. I, I can't send something that's based on assumptions or something. No. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Okay. May, may I clarify? To, Mr. Hammer, then I'd like to. Okay. Like I said, j just to make sure everything is, you know, clear. Okay. No figures were listed in Chief's letter. What I said <coughs> is according to the most recent population data submitted to the Election Commission. Okay. And the Election Commission received this data from David Justice on February 5th. <coughs> and they took action on that. You said it from the February Mr. Hoskins. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And at the risk of <coughs> belaboring this, Todd, it's my understanding that by statute, the Election Commission's in power to come up with these numbers. We choose to apportion, or if we're compelled to by law, based on time frame, then we accept those numbers or we reject them. We don't say, we want this different set of numbers. Go back and draw some math. As much as we might want to, there's no legal authority for us to do that. Is that correct? I would agree with you. Agree with that with that statement. I mean, our, our, under the statute, we either uh, accept or reject. And remember why there was a lawsuit in the first place. The re the lawsuit brought by Chief Smith in the first place is that, look, counsel, you came up with these figures on your own. You didn't follow the law. It was left up to the election commission to find these numbers, and you left them out. So you go back and and, and you let the election commission find you know you know determine that apportionment. And so we, we've spent months getting back to that that area. They have now submitted that report. So if we're to follow the process, and if we're to accomplish what it seems to me we're compelled to do by March the first, we have to accept or reject the report in as much as it says here's the numbers. And if we accept that report, then by statute, the Election Commission apportions, not, not redraws lines, not redistricts, which is solely within our purview, but decides how many counselors in each district is essentially apportioned. Right. 
So that seems to me to be the very basic question is accept or reject these numbers, not whether we want to propose alternative numbers, but whether we simply accept or reject them. And Councillor Fishinghawk's motion, as I understood it, was to say accept these numbers and of course it follows from that that you're going to follow the nine district map because that's what we have right now is nine districts. So I think that's the two-step motion that I anticipate we're going to be looking at. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Ms. Corey Jordan. <clears throat> the only thing I would add to what Councillor Hoskins has just said is it isn't an act that requires this, it's the Constitution that requires this. Mm -hmm. They have constitutionally now completed their job. They have brought us back uh, an amended remand report and I believe it's incumbent upon us now to accept what's in that report. They did their due diligence. Let's accept it and then we can move on to the next step, which puts it right squarely here with the Tribal Council, what we do with those numbers after this motion, if it should pass, we can then move to our step. Um, Ms. Fulbright? Thank you. I've got really mixed emotions about all this because I've studied the bad address list for Sequoia County quite a bit, and folks down there are just like a rolling stone from here to there, and they would be on the bad address list, but I'm pretty wide known around the county, I know where people are, and they're still right there. Uh, some of them were deceased, but the majority of them would just moved from here to there, or moved in with grandma, or whatever, and I'd like, I'd hate for us to lose a lot of our count, because people were just roaming around the county, they're kind of like Councilor Buzzard, they were still there. But if the election commission has come up with the number of 102,000, it looks like we need to accept the number that they came up with. But I'm still wondering what happened to my people down there when I know they're still there just because they've got a bad address. Although I did, I don't know if it was uniformly across the board or what, but I saw uh, Councillor Tina Glory Jordan and Bill John Baker's. Uh, return of bad addresses. I mean, it was a stack that high of postcards. Well, I'm sure the majority of those people are still in Cherokee County, but uh, I don't think that they were just taking Several of us sent out a lot of mass mailings for it to be rejected on the bad addresses. I don't think it was just taken from two council districts. So, I really don't haven't made up my mind what to do here, but it's really confusing as to where our people went. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? We do have a motion on the floor to accept, accept the election commission's demand report. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Aye. aye. Roll call. Yes, you accept the remand report. Chuck mm -hmm. Hoskins, you here? Yes. Connie Gloria Jordan? Yes. Curtis Snell? Yes. Chris So? Yes. David Thornton? Kara Cowan Watts? No. Bill Anglin? No. Bill John Baker? Yes. Jack Baker? No. Harley Bazard? No. Julia Coates? No. Bradley Cobb? No. Joe Crittenden? Yes. Jody Fishinghawk? Yes. Mary Fraley? Yes. Janelle Fulbright? Yes. Don Garvin? No. We have nine yes and seven no. Nine yes, seven no. Motion carries to accept the remand report. Now the second portion, the way I'm understanding it, is that uh, we can ask the election to commission to apportion vis-a-vis -vis the nine districts. Am I, is everyone clear on that part? Or is it Dr. Hembry? Is that right? <laughs> or leave it as it is? Or you, you can leave it as it is 15, or if there's a motion to, uh, to take that figure and divide it by the nine districts, that would... Mr. Hoskins? I have, but you said leave it as it is. As it is what? Well, if you leave it as it is, we go in, in with 15 districts, 
we will have an evidentiary hearing whether that is constitutional or not. But it's my, my understanding through uh, discussion, you know, through the chief's letter and, and earlier discussion that it's uh, it, that the council would like these divided by by the nine. I understand. Okay. Was the which can't miss Lori Jordan? Um, now let me make sure that's just divided by the. Who do you go? Right here. <laughs> that's just to divide the number that was in the amended remand report by the nine districts that exist now. Correct. That's all we're asking them to do is the next step. The next step of apportion that figure through the the nine districts. They don't move lines or anything. No they one just, would draw any lines. Just give us a number for each one of the existing nine districts. Yes. The other well, we're, I need a motion. <laughs> I make that motion. I have a second. Moved and second. Now discussion. Any discussion? We'll make sure we're. Dr. We'll make sure what the motion is is to put it in the nine districts. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, that's election commission to apportion vis-a-vis uh, -vis the nine districts. Mm -hmm. Current lines. Yes. Yeah. Current lines. Current lines. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Motion and a second. No discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Aye. aye. Roll call. Yes, as you uh, ask the election commission to apportion. Chris Soap? No. Kara Cowan Watts? No. Bill Anglin? No. Bill John Baker? Yes. Jack Baker? No. Harley Buzzard? No. Julia Coates? No. Bradley Cobb? Yes. Joe Crittenden? Yes. Jody Fishinghop? Yes. Meredith Fraley? Yes. Janelle Fulbright? Yes. Don Garvin? No. Chuck Hoskin Jr.? Yes. Tyna Glory Jordan? Yes. Curtis Snell? Yes. Nine yes and seven no. Nine yes, seven no. Motion carried. <coughs> Mr. Election Commissioner, you've got your work cut out for you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay. Moving on down to new business, we have a resolution confirming a nomination of Rob Thompson as a board member of the editorial board. Hi, Melanie. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Mr. Thompson unfortunately came down with, we thought it was pneumonia, but it's bronchitis, <laughs> and so is unable to be here today, uh, So, uh, but he is available by phone if you wish to speak with him today, uh, or you may choose to table his nomination uh, at your pleasure. And a motion to approve Mr. Thompson's uh, nomination. So moved. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, item two is an act uh, or an amendment to the um, Jobs Growth Act. Um, Mr. Stewart, are you going to take that? I can along with uh, Ms. Knight. Yeah, I think this is a very good move in this particular direction. Uh, I understand this amendment uh, is to form one board of directors, and uh, rather than having board of directors for each of the our major corporations. That's correct. And um, I'm assuming, and, and it's logical to me, that this would bring better control and ensure that all the companies are strategically going in the right direction or in the same direction anyway yes and uh, you know I've been a proponent of this for some time because as we have we form these different companies to uh, market to the federal government it gets quite cumbersome because of size limits and so on and has to do with some of the regulations but uh, we're going to have numerous companies that are going to be competing and unless we have one common direction and we're able to align those companies uh, correctly in their respective businesses, then we're always going to be, you know, bumping heads and it's going to be inconsistent to the government. 
and uh, it just provides us to, uh, you know, have, have leadership from the top down in a very consistent way. And, and we've already seen some of those benefits, uh, just being able to direct traffic and resources to the various companies to get them jump started to achieve their goals. And I see it as, as a very positive move for us. Madam Speaker, I'd move for approval. I'll second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Mr. Bedford? I want to make sure that uh, I understand this uh, correctly. Are you saying we're going to dissolve the CNI board, CNE board, and CNB board and have one board overall? So there won't be any more board directors at CNI? Is that what you're saying? The, the, uh, the legal board of directors would then reside at the CNB level. So that entity would be responsible for making decisions as it see fits for the subsidiaries owned by the by C and B. And so, will this new board consist of uh, board members that are already currently on existing boards? Yes, sir. How many from each board will serve on this? Uh... A hundred percent of the existing board members would roll up to this new board, and I think we've added one more to make it an odd number. Is that correct? So 17, I think 16 is the actual number. This is 17 so that we would have an odd number for voting purposes. Okay. Well, that, that clarifies some things for me because I did have concerns about moving up to one board. I think there were some concerns in here from some council members about money that would pay to board members. And that was a concern of mine too, but also I think you've answered a question that I wanted to hear. And you said what I wanted to hear because I didn't feel like that... Uh, by abolishing a, a CNI board that is used to doing technology, construction, and things like that, that other board members may not know those uh, solutions to those problems or, or know the contacts. So if we're going to move uh, those board members up to one board, then I would favor this. If they weren't, then I would certainly oppose it. Yes, and, and from a practical standpoint, uh, there would be exe an executive committee and a methodology okay. assigned to each company so that we wouldn't lose that knowledge base or that experience. Okay. So I think we've addressed that through a committee structure, and then those committees report back up to the full board. Okay. Well, I mean, that we was my concern, so, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Dave, you will have a, like a, more or less like a president to run the day-to-day -day operations in each of these corporations, correct? Yeah, that's you correct. The CEO, and those presidents would be reporting to you? Yes, those, those presidents would be responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the company, mm -hmm. of each company, and for their profit center and to make certain profit goals. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the CEO of CMB would essentially set strategy and allocate resources and set, you know, keep the companies in their respective businesses and just help direct strategy. Dr. Cobb? Um, I don't know if this is an amendment that needs to be made, uh, a friendly amendment, but I would um, put forth that at least through this election cycle, for, for now until there's a new election, that the uh, current advisory board members still meet uh, because those advisory board members have specific interests in CNI, CNE, and CNB, um, and we could revisit whether how many advisory board members from the council we need to appoint at another time, but I would I would like to see the current advisory board members, and that may have been discussed, I just didn't see it in here. So. Yeah, I, I, just from my perspective, the, the legal side of this, from a legislative standpoint, sets the legal governing body of the corporations, and then administratively the council would elect to do however they saw fit to manage from an advisory position because these advisory board members don't actually vote. Correct. So I think that could, that should be at another discussion, but I would see that to continue as well, that we would still have, because we want advisory board members there to reflect back to, you know, the council as a whole. If you feel that's a discussion for another time, that's fine. I just wanted to point that out. Do you wish the council? Dr. Ember? <laughs> <laughs> Let's give that some thought because, you know, we've just gone through uh, uh, issues of quorum and, 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 and notice. Uh, let's uh, let me get with uh, the attorney general's office and make sure that uh, that we we obviously need advisory board members and need them to report, but we want to make sure that uh, we don't run afoul of any uh, uh, FOIA requirements. So we will. There's a way to skin that cat. But I just.
But uh, how do you want that on the agenda for next time? Well, but it doesn't. Todd, for clarification, it doesn't amend this legislation. No, 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 no. Right. So nothing to do with this question. Right. Any questions or comments for Mr. Stewart? Yes, Ms. Fishinghall. I hardly touched on it, and I didn't get to hear it about the compensation. It's going to stay. What we will have is a set compensation structure for the board members, and currently. Uh, at least at C&E, and this is the model we'll, we'll adopt, is that it would be based on participation and attendance at actual board member board meetings and also committee meetings. But it will be a maximum, so there'll just be one set method of compensation for each member, and they will be required to attend meetings and be members of of committees. So there'll be one scheme, I guess. Okay. Could you get that to us? When you have it figured out? Well, we have some ideas. It's very similar to the C and E model, so I can I can okay. get you that. Uh, yeah. It would actually be adopted, you know, by the new board structure. But I can give you some framework from from we would uh, advise, okay. you know, the new board. The other thing I know last month in committee, and since you're going to be on, we're all on. We requested a copy of all the different minutes. Mm -hmm. from the entities we sent to the private council so I can read them. Okay. So I'm just, since you won't be over them, I just like to... Those are available, you. yes. Okay. And then, can uh, one or two of us talk to you so we don't have to do it in an executive session or anything after this meeting in the office so we can talk to you all? Sure. Okay. And I'll, mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Um, make the motion. I did. You want this by acclamation? Um, yes, please. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. <coughs> uh, item three is a resolution authorizing off-track wagering, the off-track wagering compact with Oklahoma. Uh, Ms. Ms. Milley, are you going to do that or? I'll also allow David to come forward and explain that. He was more involved in the negotiations okay. of the compact. Okay. Uh, this is a standard off-track off -track betting compact that the state has approved for other tribes. We have not needed the compact because we were within certain restrictive mile limitations of tracks, so we could not have an off-track uh, betting uh, facility at any of our casinos. Well, that has changed uh, with uh, now that with Blue Ribbon Action, uh, we're able to, uh, that we've taken, we, we're able to actually have an off-track betting uh, facility at uh, West Siloam, uh, Roland, and Salisaw. So what this compact does, it's very similar to the other compacts. There's nothing unique about it. Uh, our gaming commission actually uh, monitors and regulates our own processes, so we're not giving up anything. Uh, and some of the details of that, Melanie, from a legal standpoint, uh, nothing unique about the compact. Yeah, so it's 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 pretty much a standard, uh, and we've we've been trying to get this approved through the governor's office, and this is a step in the process. They have to see council approval before it's actually reviewed by them. So that's why we're bringing it to you today. Entertain a motion. And second. Second. Now discussion, Dr. Cobb, and then Mr. Button. So just to be consistent, um, and I may ask Jamie this question, so the just shy of $71 million over the last five years that I had discussed, that number is going to go up again. Um, this is going to add to that, I'm assuming. Um, have you looked at the number? you got any idea roughly what this does to our compact as far as what we pay out? No. no. Okay. That's what I want to know. It, it, yeah, it does not affect those payments. It's a diff different compact. That's what I want to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Buzzer? And, and I, that was one of the questions I had, but I guess this is pertains to this, like West Island Springs and Roland, you be doing an add-on, or are you going to make room for them in there eventually? Or? Yes, what we have, in, if, if you'll remember the layout in Salisaw, we have an area that has not been built out yet, yeah. so we'll build that out, and then West Siloam, we have some ideas about where that's going to be. So yes, we will have and areas. The, and I had a follow-up question. And what anticipated uh, percent of increase of income do you think this will give? Oh gosh, you, you know, that's a difficult one. Um, 
I, I, I'd be, so, I, so I guess remodeling the thing and putting those machines in there is probably going to... The business case will be positive. It'll be positive. Okay, yes. that, that was a yes. question of a hand. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> um, this, well, this is a resolution. All in favor, signify to say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay, thank you. Thank you, David. Okay. Item four, um, it's a new item that was under the amendment of the, of the agenda. It's a resolution authorizing the establishment of the Gammon Trust. Um, Ms. Coates, or, did you want to take that one? Can you hear? I'm, I, I can, but because of the difficulty uh, communicating here, I'm going to ask that uh, Councillor Kellen Watts um, take this instead, if she would. Yeah, Karen, you want to take it? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So uh, I'd like to present this for a motion to approve. I believe you had it in front of you via email prior to this meeting. I have a second. Second. Move and second. Discussion? Yes, Mr. Self. I did have one discussion about the uh, requirements for um, how many hours that, that these students are enrolled in during their particular semester. Has that been defined or is that still, um, it says the minimum in the, in the verbiage. Is that something we want to? The trust itself, as long as it uh, states that they have to be a full-time student at an accredited university, and, what, and, and that requirement may okay. vary that, between that's universities. Covered, right. yeah. okay. Thank Any you. further discussion? Mr. Hoskin? Um, I mean, is this resolution essentially trying to bring us into some consistency with the terms of the trust? I guess I'd direct that question to, well, to, to the secretary. Madam Speaker? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. The, uh, back when the trust was established, um, we recognized apparently that there was a requirement for a resolution on our side to establish the trust. One was developed and I believe submitted. I, we cannot find record, however, of one being passed. And so that's the reason for this resolution now at this time to establish the trust, even though we've had it in our coffers for quite some time. Just to follow up, has money been received by the Cherokee Nation Education Corporation from this trust? Has that happened yet? Madam no, Speaker, sure. um, the uh, principal has been earning interest for approximately seven years. Uh, approximately over $60,000 has been earned um, in interest on that. No disbursements have been made. However, uh, we did enter an MOU with CNEC to administer the scholarships pursuant to the trust should this resolution pass and a budget modification that will be before you, I believe, in the next meeting. So this discussion might need to spill over to that, but we have an MOU between Cherokee Nation Education Corporation and Cherokee Nation. But the trust is not a part of that. That They've not had occasion to enter into any kind of an agreement. No, the, tr the trust didn't enter an agreement. Um, the nation entered the agreement pursuant to the trust to administer under its provisions to, to make those scholarships. Uh, I think some of this discussion will spill over into the ENF meeting, Madam Speaker, so I'll okay. leave it at that. Thank you. Well, if I understand this resolution right, is part of the resolution, Melanie, that we uh, make the Cherokee Nation Higher Education Program the recipient of the funds? Madam Speaker? Yes, please. Um, that's, in, in my reading of the trust document, it uh, states it's the Cherokee Nation Higher Education, let me see exactly what it says, Cherokee Nation Higher Education Program uh, that receives the share, and of course under our Constitution, the Treasurer receives donations on behalf of the nation. Uh, and then the resolution says that the Cherokee Nation Higher Education Program will be the recipient of the funds, which is consistent with the trust, and shall assign the administration of the award of scholarships from these funds accordance, in accordance with the trust. Okay, so all this resolution is doing is getting it basically in place to do something with the money. Yes. But that right now, it's under this resolution, it will still be within the nation. 
um, this resolution would need to be passed regardless of the decision about administering the, the scholarships themselves. And which, that would be for another um, another committee. Yeah, I, be I believe that the really it's 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 um, affecting the budget that has been proposed in the ENF committee, which will be at three. Okay, so we haven't got to the point where we're going to talk about who will give out the scholarships. I believe that's correct. Okay. Yes. And I guess I'll direct this question to Todd. The final paragraph says shall assign I and mean, I assume that contemplates that the education department would assign the administration of the program but would they have to come would the administration have to come back to us and say this is who we propose to assign it to or are we essentially giving them free reign to assign it to whoever they want to within the bounds of the trust as they read it the, re the resolution you know and, and and that's what a, a resolution is is expression of will of the of the, of the council it's very important that the that the resolution be passed because uh, it's very important to uh, uh, comply with the, the, the wording of the, uh, of the trust, which means that the Cherokee Nation Higher Education Program must be the recipient. Uh, now, it will be what what this resolution also calls for is is that it's going to assign the awarding of those scholarships to the education corporation with the requirement right that, and that's what well, that's what i'm concerned about oh. well it doesn't say education oh. corporation but it does say shall it's the shall assign that gives me reason to pause and i wonder if it says shall assign but implicit in that is we shall assign but when we do it and we figure out who we're assigning oh, it to, we're it. coming back to the council to get further authorization to assign it. Or is it the case that we've just given them the option to assign it however they see fit because they're going to interpret the trust document to say we can assign it to this entity? I stand corrected. It, didn't, it did not uh, uh, require it to the education I just wanted to add information that um, assignment would be made under this resolution. Uh, for administering the trust, typically we assign that internally um, in order to assign an external entity uh, to administer any funds. A, a transfer of funds is required, therefore budget would be required. And so uh, the budget modification uh, that is on the table would have to be passed in order for that to happen. So any assignment done pursuant to this resolution would come to us for example, it's going to come to us in the form of the budget modification. Yes. So the council would have occasion to decide whether that was going to happen or not. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there any motion made here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I discussion? Offer a friendly amendment. Who made the motion? Who made the motion? I did. Oh, Tara. Uh, that at the end of the last further be it resolved that we add with the approval of the Cherokee Nation Tribal Council. And, and that is strictly for who actually administers the scholarship, just to clarify, right? right. I, I don't see any issue with that, so I'd be happy to accept. Mm -hmm. Two second. I did. I'm not sure. But okay. I, so maybe, okay, before, could we hear some more rationale again? Just re recap that really quick. I just want to make sure that we don't violate the terms of the trust and I believe if we're going to talk about an assignment to an outside entity, we probably need to have a full discussion on it, which this resolution doesn't take us to that point. But if they decide they want to assign it to another entity to administer, then I think it needs to come back to the Tribal Council so that we can be fully informed and make sure with the help of our legal counsel, that there's no way we violate the terms of that trust where we might lose the money. My opinion is that uh, it would come to us in the form of the budget mod. There would be no reason to put it in here. What about future, though, 10 years from now? It should still come through as a budget mod. Constitutionally. Constitutionally, if it's transferring the money from the Cherokee Nation. Hoskin. Well, if, if the councilman contemplates it will come back through, then it seems to me there's no reason to object to the language. It's, I think, 
a further, I mean, this is a resolution, so if nothing else, it's a further expression that we fully anticipate that we're going to be involved in the process of whether it is a very important assignment uh, that we'll be fully involved in that. So I would ask you to reconsider your objection on the basis that at most it's redundant, which is not particularly harmful in this case. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Baker? Then I'm willing to accept it. Okay. Any further discussion? And that was a friendly amendment, correct? Yes. All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, and the final resolution is uh, the recognition of uh, former Prince, uh, Deputy Chief uh, Hastings Shade as a national treasure of the Cherokee Nation. Mr. Baker? Yes, this resolution recognizes former Deputy Chief Hastings Shade as a national treasure, and I make a motion to approve. Second. Is it second? Any discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. Baker? Yeah, it would be a privilege to be added as a sponsor for our good. And if I may be good also? Does everyone want mm -hmm. to be added as a sponsor? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, next order of business is announcements. Any announcements? Mr. Journal. Second. <laughs> all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. All right.